Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be an introduction to training in adult learning. This is Lecture B. The learning objectives for the Introduction to Training in Adult Learning Unit are number one, define the levels of learning per Bloom's taxonomic domains, cognitive, affective, psychomotor, and two, describe the characteristics of adult learners and factors that impact training design and learning outcomes. As we go through this next section, I want you to consider, what is learning? What's unique about adult learners? Because most of the learners you're going to encounter that use electronic health records are adult learners. What are good strategies for helping adults learn? And then, what makes a good lesson plan for adult learners? Before we begin, I want you to consider a recent positive learning experience you had and think about what made that a positive experience. So pause the slideshow and take a minute to think about this question. Now if you've rejoined the slideshow, I want you to consider a recent negative learning experience you had and what specifically made that experience negative. When you're ready and have your answers, we can proceed. Maybe some of the things you considered in your learning experiences, both positive and negative, is how engaged you were. Were you really interested in the learning experience? Were you actively involved in the learning or were you rather passive? This may point to one of the key concepts of learning. Learning occurs as a result of an activity in which the learner engages. If the learner is not engaged, very little learning will occur. But what makes adult learners different than children? Do we need to change the way we do our training when we're training adult students versus what you may have experienced back in school? Well, here are some of the characteristics of adult learners. We'll discuss each one in more detail. Adults want to be actively involved in their learning, and adults have a broad base of experience which they can bring to the classroom. Adults want to learn what is important to them, and they'll want to apply that learning immediately back in their job and in their own life. So the learning needs to be relevant to the needs of adults and to help them solve problems. But we also have to remember that, as you know well, adults have busy lives, many responsibilities, and limited time. When entering into a lot of learning experiences, adults can choose whether they want to participate or not. But you may also want to consider that adults often resist change. Adults fear failure. Adults can be learners and trainers. And adults have different learning styles. You're going to encounter a lot of resistance, a lot of fear of failure, and a lot of different learning styles in a healthcare environment, and we'll explore some of these in the next few slides. Before we move on, we want to discuss one of the important topics of adult learners. It's a term called andragogy. Andragogy is the art and science of teaching adults. Malcolm Knowles, in 1988, is the educator who is attributed with developing this term. So let's look at some of Knowles' principles of adult learning and andragogy. The principles that Knowles put forth are Adults must be partners in the learning education plans and evaluations. Adults learn experientially based on positive and negative experiences that they've had in the past. The material that's presented to adult learners must be relevant to the learner and problem-based learning is more effective than just content-based learning or memorization. Remember we also discussed that adults are pressed for time. They have jobs, families, communities that are competing for their time as a learner. Adults are goal-oriented. They bring their previous knowledge and experience to the classroom. They may be interested in aspects of the course or content that is directly relevant to them. And finally, different people also have different motivation levels when they come to the classroom, and this affects their goals. Adults need to be involved in their learning. This means that they have to take personal responsibility for their learning, and they want to be involved in the evaluation and the planning of their learning. So it's good to find out from your learners what they hope to experience from the learning, and also involve the learner in the feedback from the training session that you collect. Another criteria of adult learners is readiness. This is the concept that the learning needs to be immediately relevant, not something that they may use in the future. This often means it's work-related or somehow specific to their job. 
but could also be related to their personal goals linked to their interests in their career. But regarding training for the implementation of electronic health records, most of the time it will be work-related, so this will be an easy one to overcome. Another concept of adult learning is it should be task-oriented. Training should be problem-driven, not just the memorization of facts. So when presenting training for electronic health records, it's helpful to base the training in actual clinical situations. And adults need to be motivated. Adults respond better to internal versus external motivators. You need to tap into an adult learner's motivation, as opposed to just the fact that they were sent to do the training. If somebody doesn't believe or isn't motivated for their training, then often they won't be engaged in the learning. Another important factor to consider in an adult learning environment, particularly in a healthcare setting, is that the clinical workforce is very diverse. You have to take into account that there are people and workers from many different cultures, religions, ethnicity, languages, and some workers may have disabilities. In planning your training material, you should take these factors into consideration. Also, these learners have different expectations about their work and their career. Some are highly motivated. Some people are here as a temporary job or have other important areas of life that outweigh the working environment. There will be a large age range in your environment, from baby boomers to net gen. This implies that they have different information and technology literacy skills. Some of the younger net gen learners who are under the age of 25 have grown up with computers and are very comfortable with them. Some older learners may not be as comfortable with computer technology or even typing. Again, in the clinical workforce, it's going to be very diverse in their education and their general life experiences. Adult learners also have different learning styles. Learning style is a learner's preference to a method for learning. These aren't exclusive and it's really considered a preference. There are visual learners, auditory learners, and kinesthetic learners. Kinesthetic learners are people who like to learn by doing, assemble an object. Visual learners learn through seeing. These learners need to see the teacher's body language and facial expressions to fully understand the content of the lesson. They tend to prefer sitting in the front of the classroom to avoid other obstructions. They may think in pictures and learn best from visual displays including diagrams, illustrated textbooks, videos, handouts, and during a lecture or classroom discussion, visual learners often prefer to take detailed notes to absorb the information. Some people are stronger auditory le learners, and they learn through listening. These people learn best through verbal lectures, discussion, talking things through, and listening to what others have to say. Auditory learners interpret the underlying meanings of speech through listening to the tone of the voice, pitch, speed, and other nuances. Written information may have little meaning until it's actually heard. These learners often benefit from reading text out loud or using a tape recorder. Then there are kinesthetic or tactile learners. These people learn through moving, doing, and touching. Tactile persons learn best through a hands-on approach, actively exploring the world around them. They may find it hard to sit still for long periods of time and may become distracted by their need for activity and exploration. There are several sites on the internet where you can take your own learning inventory. Another basic concept to consider before we get into further units in training and instructional design is Bloom's Taxonomy. This is a detailed picture showing all the different levels of Bloom's Taxonomy, but we'll just focus on a few of them. Bloom's Taxonomy is a classification of different objectives that educators set for their learners. These will be helpful when we develop learning objectives in another unit. This was developed by Benjamin Bloom in 1956. This image is called Bloom's Rose, and it shows the connections of all the different levels of Bloom's taxonomy. In this unit, we will focus on three domains in Bloom's taxonomy, the affective, cognitive, and psychomotor domains. The affective domain is a person's attitudes or emotions and these could be things such as ethics and trust, even trust in the computer system. Different cultures and ethnicities also come into factor here, as well as a person's beliefs. The second domain, cognitive, 
can actually be broken down into six levels knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Knowledge is actually memory of previously learned material, recalling facts, terms, and basic concepts. Comprehension moves a little higher to understanding of those facts and ideas by organizing them, comparing them, translating the facts and ideas, interpreting, giving descriptions, and stating the main ideas. The next level, application, involves using new knowledge, solving problems and new situations by applying the knowledge and facts acquired, and techniques and rules used in different ways to solve those problems. In analysis, the learner examines and breaks information into parts by identifying motives or causes. The learner can make inferences and find evidence to support generalization. While on synthesis, a learner combines information together in different ways by combining elements into new patterns or proposing alternative solutions. And finally, in evaluation, a learner can prepare a list of criteria or debate an issue. In this diagram, you can see the hierarchy of cognitive and effective learning outcomes. Starting at the bottom of this pyramid, you see remember, which is really just basic knowledge. Moving up to understanding, application of the knowledge, and the top level, analyze, evaluate, and synthesize, or create new knowledge. The third level of Bloom's taxonomy domain is psychomotor, and this is the physical ability to manipulate a tool or an instrument. Often these are more clinical skills, but involved in electronic health record, it can even be the ability of typing. Another way to present Bloom's taxonomy is with KSAs, knowledge, skills, and attributes. You may see KSA represented more frequently in government training and HR requirements. These are the attributes required to perform a job and are generally demonstrated through qualifying service, experience, education, or training. We can compare the KSAs to the Bloom's taxonomy. You see knowledge correlates to the cognitive. Skills correlate to psychomotor and attitudes to Bloom's effective domain. Knowledge is a body of information applied directly to performance of a function. Skill is an observable competence to perform a learned psychomotor act manipulating an object. And attitudes is competence performed in observable behavior or a behavior that results in some product. This concludes the lecture on training in adult learning. The summary of the lecture is that number one, the Knowles Principles of Adult Learning can be used as a guide to help you select appropriate learning resources, exercises, and training experiences. And number two, adults learn experientially based on positive and negative experiences. Training material must be relevant, and problem-based learning is more effective than content-based learning. When designing training, you should think about how each outcome may be classified in one of three domains of Bloom's taxonomy, effective, psychomotor, and cognitive or knowledge, skills, and attitudes.